Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. Willie Stargell in left field. 
Don Clendenin at first base, batting fifth. Bill Mazeroski at second base, batting in the sixth position. Andre Rogers, the shortstop, batting seventh. Veteran Del Crandall, the catcher, batting eighth. And Bob Friend, batting in the ninth position, the pitcher. This broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of Rheingold Breweries Incorporated, Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation, and the Shell Oil Company. And is authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. Our manager Casey Single talking with the umpires at home plate. It'll be Al Bonick behind home plate. At first base, Augie Donatelli. At second base, Stan Landis. And at third base, Mal Steiner. Now Bill Mazeroski, the captain of the Pirates, going back to the bench. Casey Stengel going back to his dugout, and this ball game about to get underway. Mets have won 19 and lost 29. The Bucks have won 21 and lost 25. Mets breaking the Pittsburgh fired win streak of 12 consecutive games, the longest streak of the season, last night by a score of 8 to 6. And now the Pirates have taken the field. Ballpark here at Forbes Field, located in Oakland, Pennsylvania, which is about a 15-minute drive from downtown Pittsburgh. A beautiful area with trees and parks all through the area in center field looking into a very nice background of high trees with a wall covered with vines. Big ballpark. And it's a very pleasant evening with not a cloud in the sky. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
checking in for his sign, and we're set to get underway. Here's the first pitch of the night, a breaking ball over at the knees, strike one. Friend has won three and lost three this year. The Houston Astros and the baseball headlines of the deal that they made with the Kansas City A's this afternoon. They acquire slugging Jim Jim Teal, who's tied to the American League lead in home runs. For $100,000 cash, Jesse Hickman, a minor league pitcher, and a player to be named later. Jim Teal will join the Astros for their game tonight in St. Louis. One ball, one strike on Bobby Klaus. The Mets and Sleeving Shea of 1-3 and tied one. Here's the wind-up pitched by a friend. A ground ball bounced towards short. Rogers can't reach it. It goes beyond his reach. A base hit going into center field. Ball just beyond the reach of Andy Rogers. Now the hitter is Eddie Cranebull. Eddie drove in three runs as the Mets scissored the 12-game Pirates streak last night. Eddie now leading the ball club and runs batted in. He has a total of 29. He's not far behind the top five in the league. Bob Friend up in pitching position. Clendenin holds against the runner. And the pitch a strike on the outside corner. Joe Christopher is on deck and then Johnny Lewis. Casey has been juggling his outfield combinations depending on the opposing pitcher. Last night when Joe Gibbons started for the Bucks, Casey had an all right-handed batting outfield. Now the pitcher on the way, a swing and a miss and a high hard one. So now Friend has a two-strike count on Eddie Cranebull. One hit and five at bats. One of five hits given up by a friend in the first game of the double hitter on Sunday at Shea Stadium. Now, friend up in pitching position delivers low and outside it. He lets it go. One ball and two strikes. It has been a beautiful day in the Pittsburgh area. Brilliant blue sky, not a cloud to be seen anywhere. Game time temperature 66 degrees. playing deep in center and a step to left center. Low and outside, and Friend is pitching away from him. So Bob Friend is pitching outside to Eddie Cranepool with his outfielder, Bill Verdon, playing toward left center. Most inviting home run target in this big ballpark is for the left-hand hitters who can pull the ball down the right field line. 300 feet right down the line, a high screen, a ball off the screen is in play. It's two and two on Eddie Cranepool. Here's the pitch on the way. Bouncing ball hit down to third. Bailey fires to second for one. That's all they can get. Mazeroski takes the throw to force Bobby Klaus. One out and one on. That will bring up Joe Christopher. going with a 10-game bat streak, and over the 10 games, he's at almost 400, 395. So he's now raised his average a long ways. It's up to 256. He had a long way to come. Yogi Berra on the lines at first, Don Hefner coaching at third. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch on the way. A breaking ball, a strike on the outside corner. Gary Kroll, who had the Cubs shut out going to the eighth inning, his last time out will be the pitcher tomorrow against the Pirates, and his opponent will be Vernon Law. The Deacon has been pitching real well. He lost his first five decisions, and in the five losses, his teammates scored a combined total of five runs. A drive in the air to rather deep center. Bill Verdon drifting back in the big center pass to he's under it. And he puts it away for the out. Two outs, 
Johnson, one on. Here's Johnny Lewis. Johnny's average has skidded to 256. Johnny trying to break out of a batting slump that has gripped him over the last nine or ten days. Smith in the on-deck circle. In comes the pitch, my friend. Breaking ball, low it inside. One ball and no strikes. The Mets won the opener, 8-6. to six. Galen Sisko picking up his first one of the year. And Galen had a shutout going to the eighth inning when he tired. He gave up two runs, then came out of the game. Here's the pitch thrown, a breaking ball inside. Two balls and no strikes. But it was a very encouraging performance turned in by Galen Sisko. Mets have been counting heavily on Galen, but he came up with a sore arm in the spring, just about the middle of spring training, and it put him on the sidelines for the remainder of the spring. Now the 2-0 delivery, a strike on the outside corner, 2-1 to Johnny Lewis. Every place the Mets go when they're away from Shea Stadium, a little touch of home because you see the Mets manners. The Let's Go Mets banners have caught on all across America in the Major League ballparks. Now Johnny Lewis cocks the bat. The 2-1 delivery. A ground ball hit toward the hole. It's going through a base hit to right. Green pull around second. He'll stop there as Clemente charges the ball and throws it back in. So Johnny Lewis is on with a ground single into right field. The Mets have two outs and two on. Bill Crandall going out to talk to Bob Friend as Charlie Smith comes up. Charlie has five home runs, 20 runs batted in, and he's hitting 281. Charlie had two hits last night as he returned to the action after missing three ball games due to a bad cold. He had quite a bit of infection. Number one, Charlie Smith. And it was encouraging to see him step right back into the lineup and come up with a couple of more hits. Now, Harry Walker comes to the top of the dugout to move the shortstop, Rogers, more to the hole, figuring on Smith as a pull hitter. Charlie has good power. Inside the fastball, one ball and no strikes. In this ballpark in left center and in right center, you're always mighty happy to get a line drive between the outfielders. You see home runs hit by the left-handers, but not very many hit by the right-handers. Inside to Charlie, two balls and no strikes. Jim Hickman is in the on-deck circle. Now Bob Friend in the set position delivers a drive in the air to center field. Burton racing in, racing in, and he makes the catch. The side is high. Hard hit liner, but it stayed up just long enough for Verdon, a real ball hawk, to come galloping right straight in and pick it off on the dead run. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left. The score in the middle of the first. The Mets nothing, and the Bucks coming to bat. Yet, see, boat isn't something you row or sail. You sing it like this. <laughs> sung over and over at Polish parties and picnics until the singers raise a fearful thirst. Then they change their tune. Piwa Piwa is the traditional Polish call for beer, and often it's wrangled extra dry they call for. In fact, in New York City, where there are more Poles than in all of Świdnica, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Polish Americans like Rheingold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. Hey! 
Bob Bailey is the leadoff batter for the Pirates in the last half of the first. He'll be followed by Bill Burden and then Roberto Clemente. The Mets in the infield will have Eddie Cranefield at first, Bobby Klaus playing second, Roy McMillan at short, and Charlie Smith at third. Bailey, a pull hitter, and Bobby Klaus is playing him almost directly behind second on the edge of the center field grass. Joe Christopher in left, Jim Hickman in center, Johnny Lewis in right. A swing and a miss and a breaking ball. First pitch thrown by Jack Fisher. Jack's last outing, the only runs he gave up were unearned as he beat Chicago 5-2. It was a three-hitter, and only one of the three was a clean hit. Now Fisher out of his windup, delivers. Breaking ball over, strength two call. Fisher has a good slider, the old-fashioned overhand curveball. Throws the slip pitch to change up, and a fastball. 26-year-old right-hander from Frostburg, Maryland. Two-strike delivery to Bob Bailey is inside the high. He had to get his head out of the way in a hurry. One ball, two strikes. Pittsburgh, after losing eight in a row, turned right around and won 12 in a row until they were beaten last night by the Mets. Slider outside is two balls and two strikes. Bucks started their winning streak when Bill Mazeroski returned to the action. Maz suffered a fractured angle in the spring and missed the first 31 ball games. is two and two on third baseman Bob Bailey. The 2-2 delivery. A ground ball hammered down to third. Fielded by Charlie Smith. Long throw is right on the nose. One down. Right here we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. And this is WGY 810 on the dial, Schenectady. The time is 832. Center fielder Bill Verdon hitting at 293, batting second in the order, stepping in against Jack Fisher. Fast ball a little bit inside, one ball and no strikes. Roberto Clemente will hit third, Willie Stargell is batting cleanup. Foul ball twisting back upstairs over the press box and into the crowd. One ball, one strike on Bill Verdon, the veteran outfielder from Springfield, Missouri. A one-one delivery, a swing and a miss on a slip pitch, and the count one ball and two strikes. see the good Manhattan doctors who are such great Mets fans have journeyed out to Pittsburgh to watch the action tonight and they have field box seats down beyond the visiting dugout. The one-two pitch. Inside now he had to get his head out of the way. That one goes all the way to the backstop. Well, let's see. We've seen the good doctors in spring training at St. Petersburg in Cincinnati now here in Pittsburgh and they see a lot of the night home games at Shea Stadium. is over the head. Down comes the arm. Low and inside and a full count. Three and two. One out, nobody on. And the string out on Bill Verdon, the left-handed batting center fielder. Here's the payoff pitch. Hip foul down the first baseline going in front of coach Johnny Pesky. Johnny Pesky is on the lines at first. Alex Grammis, the third base coach. The Pittsburgh pitching coach is ex-dancer Clyde King. 
The other member of the catching staff is former Cardinal catcher Hal Smith. High pop-up to shallow left field. Smitty and McMillan are after it. So is Christopher. And it's taken by McMillan across the line in foul territory. So Jack Fisher gets Bill Verdon on three and two. That brings up Clemente. The three men in the middle of the fire batting order all carried sizzling hot bats during the 12-game win streak. All three hit well over 400. Clemente right now is riding a five-game hit streak, and he's raised his average on the year to 313. He started the six-run outburst in the eighth inning last night with a 406-foot triple. Swing and a miss, strike one. Then he came up in the ninth inning, and Tom Parsons did quite a job. He struck him out on three pitches. Now Fisher looking in to get his sign from Canizero. Here's the pitch to Roberto. Whacked foul down the first baseline. No play. There was one afternoon game in the National League. It was in Chicago where Jim Bunning pitched a five-hit shutout with Philadelphia beating the Chicago Cubs 6 to nothing. Larry Jackson was the loser. Wes Covington hit a two-run homer. Tonight, the Dodgers are in Milwaukee, Houston in St. Louis, and San Francisco in Cincinnati. The Astros will have a new first baseman in their lineup. Low and outside on Roberto Clemente. One ball and two strikes. As they say, when you change up on Clemente, you better throw out the dirt because he's a great change-up hitter. And that's where Fisher put that one. Cleveland three, Detroit two at the end of three and a half tonight in Cleveland. Hank Gary against Ralph Terry. The one-two pitch. Lined hard but foul. Deep down the left field line, no play. Cleveland got out in front of Detroit on a three-run homer by Pedro Gonzalez. At Yankee Stadium, the White Sox nothing and the Yankees nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Joel Horland against Bill Stafford. Washington and Minnesota tonight. Red Sox and the A's rained out in Kansas City, and the Orioles play the Angels on the West Coast tonight. Clemente, a slow bouncing ball by Fisher, picked up by Smitty, the peg, out at first on a real close play. Well, that was a look and listen job, and a fine play by Charlie Smith. Charlie's fielding has been as solid as he's hitting. He had to come in and over toward the shortstop side on that slow bouncer. So he took an infield hit away from Roberto Clemente. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left at the end of one, the Mets nothing and the Pirates nothing. Giants, to use a pun, can certainly give you the willies these days. Willie Mays leading the major leagues in home runs with 17. Tied for the runner-up laurels, Willie McCovey with 12. McCovey, second in the National League and runs batted in with Willie Mays right behind. And the willies will be coming to Shea Stadium on Tuesday night. Three night games against the Giants, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. Tickets are on sale for the Giants series and all home games at Shea Stadium this year at the advanced sale window at Shea Stadium open seven days a week. The advanced sale window at the ballpark is located at entrance D. In Manhattan, the Mets have a ticket window in the Long Island Railroad waiting room at Penn Station. At Grand Central Terminal, the ticket location is at the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue ramp. You can buy Mets tickets at Macy's and the Walt Whitman Shopping Center in Huntington during regular store hours. Or make box and reserve seat reservations at all Howard Closed stores in the greater New York area. Jim Hickman leading off against Bob Friend as we go to the second. Jim's bat was cooled off by the Pirates last night. He went 0 for 4 after a big series against the Cubs in Chicago. High fly ball to rather shallow right field. The money just jogging in, slowing up now. He's under it, and he puts it away for the out. So a friend retires Hickman on one pitch, and that brings up McMillan. And seven, and playing shortstop. 
Well, using that big Orlando Cepeda bat model, Mack has had eight hits in his last 13 times at bat. Nobody exactly sure what the bat weighs, but the guess is about 37, maybe 38 ounces. Mack says it's all well and good, but I'm not strong enough to keep swinging this thing much longer, despite the fact that I'm hitting with it. Mack has raised his average to 261. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball, strength called. An afternoon game tomorrow, and our broadcast will be on at 1.30. The game gets underway at 1.35. Pitch to McMillan. He lets it go, and it's a little bit inside, tucked under the chin. One ball, one strike. Veteran Roy McMillan is the only player on the squad who has started every ball game. Tonight's game is the 49th game of the year. One-one delivery. Get high in the air, a fly ball to center. Bill Verdon comes in a few steps, puts it away for the out. Two away, nobody on, and that brings up Chris Canizero. Number five, Chris Canizero. Chris was on base twice last night, and he scored two runs. He was a hit batsman, and he drew a walk. Each team had a six-run inning last night. Friend Anabee's wind-up delivers. Ground ball hammered down toward third. Booted by Bailey, the third baseman, and Canizero is on. Bailey, going off to his left, tried to make a glove hand scoop. So he's charged with an error. Canizero is a base runner, and it brings up Jack Fisher. has three hits and 26 times at bat. Fisher has pitched so consistently well that he leads the pitching staff by a rather wide margin in total innings pitched. Bounced foul. Certainly one of the most important statistics going for a pitcher when he talks contract in the winter is the total number of innings that he pitched. That's why Don Drysdale, not only a big winner, is such a great pitcher for the Dodgers. He'll be over 300 innings every year. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball over. Strength two called. Fisher has now pitched 75 innings. The next to him is Warren Spahn. off the outside corner. Spawny has not decided definitely on his alignment for the Sunday doubleheader. If Larry pitches along with Jackson, then Spawny would open on Tuesday night against the Giants. He went the route in beating the Giants in Candlestick Park on that western trip. The one-two delivery. Low and outside. Two balls and two strikes. But also, by Sunday, Spahn will be well-rested, and it might be that he'll pitch one game of the doubleheader. Now, friend, eyes the runner, Canizero. The 2-2 pitch is foul-tipped into the dirt right by home plate. Cleveland four, Detroit two at the end of four innings in Cleveland. A Gary pitching against Ralph Terry. White Sox nothing and the Yankees nothing at the end of two. Joel Horlin against Bill Stafford. Lead off batter by 
Bobby Klaus is kneeling on deck. Friend has a two and two count on Jack Fisher. Here's the pitch on the way. A check swing slow roller hit back toward the mound. An easy play for Friend. He throws on to Clint Dunham, and the Mets are out in their half of the second. No runs, no hits, one error, one left on. At the end of an inning and a half, the New York Mets nothing and the Pittsburgh Pirates nothing. And now it's time for another fact from the Viceroy Hall of Records. Say, how many major league teams can you think of that got their nickname from their stockings? The White Sox, of course, and the Red Sox, also the Reds. But there's another one. You see, the striped socks the Detroit team wore were what inspired sports writers to call the team the Tigers. Okay? Next question. How come Viceroy has got the taste that's right? Here's the answer. Viceroy is specifically designed to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Now, some brands taste too strong as if they didn't have a filter. And others taste too light. They never seem to satisfy your taste. But Viceroy... Ah, uh, Viceroy's not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. Some folks even sing about it. Listen. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Not too strong and not too light. The taste that's right. until up against Jack Fisher in the last half of the second. Stargill belted his 11th home run of the year last night. He's back 25 runs in. Here's the pitch to him. And he pitches away. It's outside ball one. They try to pitch away from Stargill to make him hit the ball to center field or to left field. He has about as much power as anybody around the National League and many people think he's the coming hitter. Foul ball, he lost the bat. Look out, the bat sails back over the field box railing and into the crowd, but nobody was hurt. Fisher had started to a fool so badly on the pitch that he lunged for it. The bat slipped out of his hands and wound up in the crowd. check to make sure that no one was hurt when the bat sailed into the stands. One gentleman appeared to have been whacked on the arm and he is being ushered to the first aid station. One ball and one strike on Willie Starkville. Now Fisher out of his wind up the pitch. A ground ball hit the second. Bobby Klaus digs it out. Straightens up, throws to Cranepool, and Stargell is out. One out and nobody on. Clint Dunham hitting number five in the Buck batting order. Clint Dunham has a seven-game hit streak going. He's batting at 335. Highest batting average in the game tonight belongs to Eddie Cranepool. Other than the average of Andre Rogers, who has not played that much. Rogers has played only 20 games. He's hitting 386. Foul ball hit back upstairs. No play. No score. Pittsburgh hitting in the second. One out and nobody on. Fast ball. Brushes him back from the plate. One ball and one strike. Astros in St. Louis tonight. They will pitch Bob Bruce with the Cardinals. Bob Gibson. Lined hard down the right field line. And it's a fair ball. Bounces into the corner. Grabbed by Johnny Lewis. He goes behind Johnny. Goes back for it. Then then in round second and holds up. Lewis was trying to hurry up to get a play on Clint Denon at second. Got his glove on it but dropped it. It rolled a few feet away and he had to go back for it. So he lost any chance he might have had to make a play on Clint Denon. 
Zoltan Dennis stays out with a hard line double down the right field line. Bucks have their first hit of the game, and it brings up Mazeroski. Maz hitting 317. Obviously, when you win 12 in a row, everybody is doing a good job. The one man Harry Walker points to as the key and as the turning point is Mazeroski. He had not been playing. He'd been hurt. Now Fisher whirls, but no throw is made. Foul ball off, no play. For those of you who joined us late, we mentioned earlier the Houston Astros acquired Jim Gentile for the Kansas City A's. Gentile, one of six tied for the American League lead in home runs. To get Gentile, the Astros gave up $100,000. A minor league pitcher at Oklahoma City, Jesse Hickman, and a player to be named later. And Gentile is in the Houston lineup tonight batting cleanup. Breaking ball down low. Walter Bond, who had been playing at first, has gone to left field, and he's hitting third. And Diamond Jim is batting cleanup and playing first. Jim Teal had his two best years playing for Paul Richards in Baltimore. One out and one on. Here's the pitch on the way. Hit hard by Mazeroski. A base hit to left center. And then around third is racing in to score. And the Pirates lead one nothing. Scoring Glendon and the Bucks take the lead, one nothing. And the batter is Andy Rogers. He really has been hot. He got in the lineup after Schofield was traded away and Began suffered a muscle pull in his leg. And over the last 11 games, he's raised his average to 386 on the year. Here's the pitch on the way. Inside is ball one. He had four for four as the Mets won last night, 8-6. to six. Now a pitch out, but nothing was on. That was the pitch out, but almost wasn't. Almost looked like a strike on the outside corner. Canisero moved out, and then they had to reach back to take it. So it's 2-0 oh on Andy Rogers. A run is in. One man out, a runner at first. Let's have the infield looking for two. The outfield is step to left. And it's under the knees. Ball three. Fisher involved in a little bit of a struggle here. Last of the second. Fisher has the runner. Here's the pitch. He takes all the way, and it's in there for a strike. Three and one. Del Crandall will hit next. Then Bob Friend. Mazeroski edges away from first. He's running the 3-1 delivery. A line drive caught by McMillan. Now Mack flips the ball to Greenpool. Double play. The side is out. They were playing hit and run on three and one. Rogers hit a rather soft line drive right at Roy McMillan. And the Mets had two. One run, two hits, no errors, none left. At the end of two innings, the score, the Pirates won and the New York Mets nothing. The Giants are in Tuesday night. The Dodgers come in on Friday night. Three night games at Chase Stadium against Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Juan Marichal, and a whole galaxy of giant stars. Maury Wells has already pilfered some 32 bases. Big Don Drysdale already a nine-game winner. Sandy Koufax leading the majors in strikeouts. 
the Dodgers stars, and they lead the National League by five ball games. are in on Friday night for a weekend series of four games. The Saturday game, a week from tomorrow, will be Ladies' Day, and the Sunday action, a week from Sunday, a doubleheader. The big story of the Giants this year has been the hitting of Willie Mays and Willie McCovey. Year before last, McCovey had 44 home runs, but last year he fell off to 18. And although Stretch said that his feet hurt him a lot in the spring, those feet aren't hurting now, and he really has been hitting a ton. I'm sure a lot of fans will be not only coming out to Shea Stadium, but coming out early in order to watch both teams take batting practice. The Mets, of course, the home team will be hitting first. The Giants on Tuesday night take batting around 20 minutes until 7. Visiting team hitting practice about 5 before 1 on Saturday and 15 minutes till 12 on Sunday. So for the many baseball fans who like to come early and catch batting practice, we hope you'll do so. Right now the third inning and to follow the action, here's Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Bob, and hi there, everyone. First pitch by Bob Friend as he starts off here in the third is outside ball one. Friend pitching to the top man in the batting order, Bobby Klaus. Klaus single through the middle his first time up. Getting the first base into the game. His average at 214. Orange Vaughn throwing in the bullpen, but he's throwing for a future start. He throws about every day. A check swing, ground ball hit fairly hard to short. Andre Rogers comes up with it, throws to first base, and gets his man. So Friend gets the first out in the top of the third. Going for a future start. He throws about every day. A check swing, ground ball hit fairly hard to short. Andre Rogers comes up with it, throws to first base, and gets his man. Bo Friend gets the first out in the top of the third on the ground to short, and it brings up Ed Crane Bull. Friend has given up no runs, allowed a total of two hits. He has not walked the batter, and he has not struck out anymore. Right now, the third inning, and about here's Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Bob, and hi there, everyone. First pick by Bob Friend as he starts off here in the third is outside ball one. Friend pitching to the top man in the batting order, Bobby Klaus. Klaus single through the middle his first time up. Getting the first base into the game. His average at 214. Orange Spawn throwing in the bullpen, but he's throwing for a future start. He throws about every day. A check swing, ground ball hit fairly hard to short. Andre Rogers comes up with it, throws to first base, and gets his man. Bo Friend gets the first out in the top of the third on the ground to short, and it brings up Ed Crane Bull. Friend has given up no runs, allowed a total of two hits. He has not walked the batter, and he has not struck out anymore. Right-hand pitcher with a record of three wins and three losses. He got Crane to hit into a fourth place first time up. Ed now batting at 344. Four home runs, 29 runs better than He leads the club in RBI. Crane Pool, a uh, left-hand batter, being played shaded toward left field. And the first pitch to him, a changeup that's on the outside corner. Friend getting strike one. Mets won the first game of the series by a score of 8-6. to six. Pirates lead here one nothing after two. Tomorrow a single day game and Sunday a doubleheader. Five game series. Pitch back in with a curve inside. Count now even at one ball and one strike. Tomorrow's pitches will see Gary Cole pitching for New York and Vernon Law going for Pittsburgh. Game time will be at 1.30. That's New York time. Pittsburgh on the same time as New York City. One ball, one strike. Bob Friend, the right-hander now, back again. And the pitch line to left field. Right there is Willie Stargell as he moves in and he makes the catch. Two away, and it brings up Joe Christopher. Our young people's future depends on your hiring them today. Call your local state employment service office for details on this summer's youth opportunity campaign. Christopher batting with two in away in the top of the third. Joe flight out to center field his first time up. He's batting that 
two for five in the series against the Pirates. He has a 10-game streak going prior to this ball game. In that streak, he batted 395, 15 hits, and 38 times up to raise his average to 256. And the first pitch is bunted perfectly, but just a little bit too far. Left foul. Ball rolling off to the foul side. He would have had a base hit if the ball had stayed in fair territory. So it's a one-strike count on Joe Christopher. Bunt and he's very good at dropping the ball down. If he catches a third baseman a little bit deep, he can bunt and beat it out. Pirates lead 1-0 on a run in the bottom half of the second. One day game in the National League. Philadelphia shut out Chicago behind Jim Bunning pitching 6-0. One strike pitch is taken high and they counted one ball and one strike. Starting pitchers at Milwaukee, the Dodgers there. Osteen pitching for L.A. against Wade Blassingame for Milwaukee. Bob Bruce and Bob Gibson playing at St. Louis. Houston against the St. Louis Cardinals. And Jim Gentile has arrived. He's in the lineup batting four. Pitch to the plate is a curve looked at for strike two. One ball and two strikes. Gentile purchased from the Kansas City Athletics. Two players involved, two one minor league player and a player to be named later. San Francisco scheduled at Cincinnati. The starting pitcher for the Giants is Gaylord Terry and Joy Jay pitching for the Reds. One ball, two strikes. Bob Friend looking a long time at the signs given by Del Crandall. And now back to the plate. And the ball popped up in shallow right field. Infielders pointing up and Roberto Comeni comes in and he puts it in the basket for the out. One, two, three for Bob Friend. The first time he's done that in the ball game, and the score. At the end of two and a half, the Pirates won. The New York Mets nothing. So there's a lot more to beer drinking than meets the eye. And you'd be surprised at what strong feelings people have about what they drink their beer out of. Some people like to drink beer from a can, and some from a bottle. And there are those who wouldn't drink it anyway, but from a glass. We think a lot of Rhine Gold drinkers are going to be happy with our new chug mug chug mug is a wide mouth glass mug that holds 12 ounces of Rhine Gold Extra Dry. That even feels right when you pick it up. A little cold brown mug has the shape and weight and gurgle of a good thirst-quenching drink of beer. And of course, that's what you get, because there's Rhine Gold inside. You don't need an opener either. You just pull the tab and the top comes off with a hiss that sounds like the good Rhine Gold flavor. Look for the special chug mug displays in your area. Drink the beer that's number one in New York City. And drink it from our little drink-shaped Rhine Gold Juggernaut. We think you'll agree that we must be doing something right. Right now, we'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Your station for all the Mets games, WGY, 8, 10 on the dial, Schenectady. along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Pirates lead him 1-0. And batting for them here in the bottom half of the third is Del Crandall. Del batting for the first time against Jack Fisher. And Jack now with his first pitch to the right-hand batter. It swung on and fouled away for strike one. Crandall with a record of 179. Ten hits and 56 times up. And his old battery mate warming up with the bullpen for the Mets, Warren Spahn. Warren getting loose for a possible Sunday start. If not Sunday, he'll probably go Tuesday night against the Giants. Pitch back to the plate. A check and a swing, a foul tip just off of the bat. So the count of on two on Del Crandall. He'll be followed by Bob Friend and then Bob Bailey. Pirates with the run in the bottom half of the second to lead one nothing. Jack Fisher over the head and back to the plate. And he misses outside with a curveball. One ball, two strikes. Jack has given up only two hits, but the two hits came back to back. A double and a single for the Pirates' run. Don Clinton and sliced a double down the right field side and scored from second base when Bill Mazeroski singled through the middle. A ground line pass. Tied for it by Charlie Smith. He lands flat on his belly. Ball going out to left field and Del Crandall holds the first base with the Pirates' third hit. That brings
brings up Bob Friend. Bob has been at bat 17 times in previous ball games. He has no base hit. Setting in already on top, looking for the bunt is Charlie Smith. Holding at first base, Ed Cranville, he'll be charging. Friend 0 for 17. good power when he's swinging away, but he is not a good hitter. He does hit the ball far. Now the punt attempt out toward the pitcher's mound, picked up by Craneville. He'll have a chance at second. He goes there. The play made by Roy McMillan, and Roy started to throw to first base, but then held up and did not throw. Saw the fourth play at second base on Del Crandall with Bob Friend exchanging at first base. the batter. Bob batting for the second time. He grounded out the third base his first time up. His average at 244. Friend with a light jacket on at first base. Game time temperature was 66 degrees and it's scheduled to get down into the 50s this evening with the weather warming up tomorrow. But a pleasant day today here in Pittsburgh. Ground ball a third and it's gone through by Charlie Smith in the left field. Joe Christopher to pick it up, and Friend goes down to second base and holds there. Hard smash just to the left side of Charlie Smith on through in the left field. So the Pirates now have their second hit in the inning, their fourth in the ball game. Runners at first and second with one away, and the batter will be Bill Burton, the left-hand batter. Bill batting 291. One home run, eight runs batted in. Jack Fisher in the set position. And his first pitch is in the dirt, bouncing away from Canatero, back to the screen. Friend goes to third base, and Bob Bailey down to second base in the wild pitch. Ball bounced out way in front of home play, came up and hit Canazero on the chest protector, and then rolled about 60 feet back of him, back to the wall. One ball, no strikes, and Bill Burden. Infield now being pulled in by manager Casey Stingle. They're going to try and cut off the run. The Pirates lead 1-0, have runners at second and third. Jack Fisher, a look at the signs from Chris Canazero. Now into the windup. And his pitch. It's slowly to first base. Friend holds the third, and Cranepool makes the catch. Goes to the bag about three strides away and makes the play there for the out. Two men away now. Roberto Clemente coming up. Clemente grounded out the third his first time up. He has been almost impossible to get out for the Mets so far this year. Fisher has an open base at first base, so he can pitch him carefully, but he's a hard man to pitch to because he'll hit at anything. Many has had 13 hits and 24 times up against the Mets this year. And the first pitch, a hard line drive. A lead to the catch by Bobby Klaus at second base to retire the side. Bobby going high in the air to one hand at a fine play. And Roberto Cometti is out for the final out of the inning. In the inning, no runs, two hits. No errors and two men left. And the score at the end of three, the Pirates won, the New York Mets nothing. Now here's Bob Murphy with another unusual fact from the Vice Roy Hall of Records. Well, tonight, let's go back to 1883. Dan O'Leary was at bat for the Peoria team. It was the ninth inning, and the score was tied. The pitch came in, and Dan hit it so hard, he spun around and fell on one knee. But he picked himself up, and he tore around the base pass. When he got home, though, the umpire called him out. How come? He circled the bases the wrong way. And which way should you go for the taste that's right in filter smoking? That's right. Viceroy. Because Viceroy is specifically designed to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong like some brands that taste as if they didn't have a filter. And not too light like some others that never seem to satisfy your taste. But Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the filter for the taste that's right. Viceroy. 
Chicago behind Jim Bunning's five-hit pitching. He went all the way. Six-nothing. Covington home run in the sixth with a man on. The losing pitcher was Larry Jackson. At the end of five, Detroit five, Cleveland four. Sherry now pitching for the Tigers. A Gary was the starter. Ralph Terry pitching for Cleveland. K. Ryan and Gonzalez home runs in that game. At the end of three and a half, Chicago nothing, New York nothing. Yankees have Stafford pitching for them. Joe Holland pitching for the White Sox. Minnesota at home against Washington, Coppets against Jim Cott, Boston at Kansas City postponed because of rain and also scheduled Baltimore at Los Angeles. And now it's Bob Friend on the mound and the first pitch to Johnny Lewis has taken ball one. Lewis moving up as though to bunt. Johnny had a base hit his first time up. One of the two hits given up by Bob Friend in three innings. Pirates lead one nothing. They have four base hits. It'll be Johnny Lewis, Charlie Smith, and Jim Hickman against the right-handers. Friend comes back again and misses. It's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Johnny batting 261, picking up five points with his base hit. He has six home runs and 23 runs batted in. A left hand batter. Now, Friend at 2 0, and the pitch back to Lewis. There's a curveball hit high in the air. It's a shallow left field. Moving over, Willie really Stargell, and he now moves in as the wind takes the ball in the pit, and he makes the catch. High fly ball. That one was up there, and it's out number one. Mets got their two hits in the first inning. Since then, only one man has reached, and that was Chris Canazero on an error by the third baseman, Bailey. Now the batter, Charlie Smith, who was out to center field on a line drive. Charlie batting 279 with five home runs and 20 runs batted in. Right hand batter. Had two hits in last night's ball game and got them both in one inning. And now Bob Friend with the first pitch. It's high for ball one, and Charlie was going to push one out towards second base. He had moved out the bunt. But with the ball out of the strike zone, he decided to take in the counters at one ball and no strikes. Bill Mazeroski, the second baseman, is playing back in the grass and shaded over towards second base, so Charlie has a lot of room that way. And he takes low at ball two. Fast ball by Bob Friend. Two balls, no strikes. The score one nothing. the Pirates lead. One man away in the top of the fourth. Now Friend back again, and a hard swing and a foul ball. Ball bouncing off Dale Crandall's Shin guards and the cat now at two and one. Wind blowing in from center field. This is not the prevailing wind here in this ballpark. It normally blows toward left field. But with the unusually chilly weather we've had over the last two days, wind blowing in. Two balls, one strike, and now a friend back to Charlie Smith. And now a punt, and it's go, it goes foul. This time Charlie Bunning toward third base, and the count evens out at two and two. On deck batter, Jim Hickman. In the first inning, the Mets had runners at first and second with two away, and Charlie Smith came up and lined out the center. Good play of the ball by... Burden in center field. Bob Friend, number 19, looking for the sign. That is 2 2 delivery. A curveball bounced down towards short. Andre Rogers up with it. He comes up throwing and just gets the man. Rogers 
taking some time to get rid of the ball, and Smith almost beat it out. But the Pirates pick up their second out here in the fourth inning, and it brings up Jim Hickman. Jim hit a high fly ball to right field his first time up. He is hitless in the series so far, 0 for 5. After a fine series at Chicago. In Chicago, he had three home runs and two ball games. Drove in eight runs. Jim batting 160 with 11 runs better than for the season and three home runs. Then he has a hard swing and a high slider at strike one. Pirates one on four hits, the Mets none on two. And the pitch back to the plate, a high fastball. The count now at one ball and one strike. Mazeroski playing his second base position exactly like he did against Charlie Smith. Deep back on the grass and shaded over towards second base. Outfield playing about the same way as he did on Charlie. Now a curveball, a half swing, and a strike two. One ball, two strikes. At the end of four, the White Sox nothing, the Yankees nothing. And Bob Friend at one and two. And the pitch high and tight, and Hickman goes down. Jim was looking for a curveball in that spot. The pitch was not in that far. But the fact that he hung in there so long looking for the ball to break, he had to then break away in a hurry to keep from getting hit. So the count that two balls and two strikes. And Friend back again. Fastball fouled away, and the count will stay at two and two. Right at this point at 9.15... The sky is completely dark, the twilight gone, and the lights have taken their full effect. The lighting system here in Pittsburgh is not anything like that in Shea Stadium. Lights here are not too good compared to the new Major League standards. Now again at 2-2. And a little pop-up back of home. Del Crandall looking for it, he finds it. And he makes the play that retires his side. 1-2-3 again for Bob Friend. He has now taken out seven in a row, and the score at the end of three and a half innings, the Pirates won, the Mets nothing. If someone offers you a sapico, don't eat it, dance it, like this. The hasapico is spirited and lively. It makes Greek Americans feel like dancing, and dance they do. Until they work up a fearful thirst. Then they call for different music. Nina Nai Nai is music a Greek drinks to. He'll sit down, call for a beer, probably wrangle extra dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more Greeks than in all of Sparta, more people drink wrangle than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Greek Americans like Rheingold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. Big Willie Stargell stepping in the batter's box for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He'll be the leadoff batter against Bob Friend in the bottom half of the fourth. Pirates lead one nothing. Stargell grounded out hard to second base his first time up. His 0 for 1 gives him an average for the season of 246. He has 11 home runs and 25 runs batted in. And the first pitch is low and away, ball one. Jack Fisher going down low and just missing. Jack has given up one run, allowed four base hits. Two hits in the second scored the run. He also gave up two hits in the third. Pitch back to the plate. Low and outside again, ball two, and again just missing. Both pitches by Jack, good pitches, but just off the outside corner. Dodger's a tough man to pitch to. He has tremendous power. Dodger scored two runs in the top of the first. They lead with Milwaukee coming up for the first time, 2 0. Change up and hide away. So now Fisher, 3 0 on Willie Starger, the leadoff batter in the bottom half of the fourth. Giants did not score on their top half of the first. The Reds coming up for their first time at bat. 
Three balls, no strikes. And Willie Stargell with Don Clendenin on deck. After Don Clendenin, the batter will be Bill Mazeroski. And Jack at 3 all. Pitch is inside, ball four. And Willie Stargell walks. That was the first walk given up by Fisher. And he gives the Pirates a lead runner. Then it brings up Don Clendenin, who doubled and scored in the second. Don has now hit in eight consecutive ball games. His average at 339. Three home runs and 27 runs batted in. He also is a tough man to double up. The Mets back looking for the double play with no one out in the bottom half of the fourth. And the pitch by Fisher. Swung on and missed. The throw to first base, but Stadio gets back just ahead of the tag. It's strike one. Count on Clendon and the right hand batter. White Sox out in the top of the fifth. That game scoreless with the Yankees coming up. Pitch back, a check on the swing, and it's a curveball in for strike two. Bill Fisher, after four in a row to put Stargell on first base, comes back with two to pick up an 0 2 count on Don Clendon. Sets, looks at first base, and comes back to the plate. Fastball inside, moves Clendon and away, and the count now at one and two. Houston now with no runs in the top of the first. The Cardinals coming up. And the Cardinals out in the bottom half of the first. That game scoreless after one. And Jack Fisher back again. A little check swing back to the box. Over to McMillan at second base. He takes a low throw. Goes on to first base for double play. And a fine play in that ball by Roy McMillan. Throw from Jack Fisher was low down around the bag. Roy came up with it. And with the hard sliding Willie Stargell coming in, Roy got enough on the ball to throw out the fast man, Don Clendenin. So the Mets pick up their 50th double play of the year. This is their 48th ball game. And with two men away, the batter's Bill Mazeroski. One, six, three, double play. First pitch to Mazeroski, a right-hand batter, is low and away. A slider, it's ball one. Bill drove in the only run of the ball game in the second inning after Don Clendenin had doubled. Maz singled into center field. And he looks at a slider, and it's one ball, one strike. The pitch in the outside corner. Run batted in for Mazeroski his 13th this year. His average now at 328. He has hit in six consecutive ball games with his base hit here tonight. 1 1 delivery, a slip pitch too high for ball two. Two balls, one strike. By Earth's 1 1 on four hits. The Mets have no runs in two. And Fisher now back again. Fastball fouled back on the screen. The count now at two and two. A lot of room behind home plate in this ballpark. Over 60 feet. One time, it used to be twice that far. And it was no fun for catchers. Also, a lot of room in center field. This is a big ballpark. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Slip pitch hit down toward third. Charlie Smith charges, bobbles, but grabs it, throws the first, and he gets his man. Charlie Smith charging a slowly hit ball. Bobbled the ball, but the ball stayed in the air, and he caught it again, or caught it really for the first time, and then had time to fire to first base to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. A walk were erased by a double play, and no one left on. And the score at the end of... Four innings to play. The Pirates won. The New York Mets nothing. And now, once again, Bob Murphy. The Los Angeles Dodgers lead the National League by a margin of five games. The Dodgers, everyone feared, would suffer in the one loss column when Tommy Davis was sent to the sidelines with a fractured ankle. They dipped into the minor leagues and came up with Lou Johnson, who had been bouncing around in the minor leagues with brief major league trials for some 13 years. And Lou Johnson has been doing quite a job. And the Dodgers keep continuing their winning ways. 
The Dodgers will be in New York next weekend, Friday night, Ladies' Day game Saturday, and a doubleheader on Sunday. And the Sunday, June 13th doubleheader, a week from this Sunday, will be Kingston Day, with ceremonies between games honoring the Old Timers Hall of Fame in Kingston, New York. Among those taking part will be a Mets vice president, one of baseball's original firemen, Johnny Murphy, who started his baseball career in Kingston, New York. So make your ticket plans now. Tickets are on sale at the advanced sale window at Endress D, seven days a week at Shea Stadium, as well as the other Mets ticket outlets. McMillan will try and get things going against veteran right-hander Bob Friend, who has been working very easily. Friend had a five-hitter in going the route to win 9-1 to one in the first game of the Shea Stadium doubleheader last Sunday. Back hitting number seven in the order, then Chris Canizero and Jack Fisher. Back fly to center is only time up. Now the pitch on the way, and the breaking ball is down low. One ball and no strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the fifth inning with Pittsburgh in front, one nothing. Pitch to Roy McMillan. He takes it. It's a fastball over for a strike. One ball and one strike. The breeze coming in from center field toward home plate. The game time temperature was 66, and now the evening is starting to cool off. The evenings have been unusually cool the last few days in the Pittsburgh area. The 1-1 delivery. A pop-up hit down the right field line. Clemente running toward the line, near the line. He makes the catch. And he caught it in fair territory just as he reached the line. So Bob Friend has now retired eight straight hitters. Last base runner for New York was Chris Canizero, who steps in now. And Chris reached safely on an error. Bobby Klaus and Johnny Lewis had base hits in the first inning, and that's all the Mets have been able to get off Bob Friend. Jack Fisher kneeling in the on-deck circle. Now the pitch. Chris tries to bunt. He misses strike one. He tried to dump one down the third baseline. set tomorrow. He'll have Vernon Law pitching. Breaking ball, a strike on the outside corner, and now Friend quickly has Canizero two strikes. Gary Kroll, the Mets pitcher in the day game tomorrow, broadcast time 1.30. Gary pitched the best ball game of his major league career his last time out in Chicago. Strike delivery. Ground ball hammered down to third. A big hop for Bob Bailey. He flips it across to Clinton and in time for the out. Two men down. That'll bring up Jack Fisher. Fans look for the Ryan Gold Chug a Mug displays in your area. The Chug a Mug looks and sounds like just what it is a good, thirst quenching drink of beer. 12 ounces of Ryan Gold Extra Dry, and you can drink it right from the mug. He bounced back to the pitcher, Vern Law, his only time up. The pitcher, Bob Friend, I beg your pardon, outside, ball one. (laughs) 
Now Fran winds the pitch to Fisher, a swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. On the year, Friend has won three and lost three. It will surprise you, but the Pittsburgh Pirates, as of the latest averages from the league, have the second best team earned run average in the National League. Off the outside corner, two balls and a strike. The only pitching staff in the National League. With a better combined ERA right now, the Los Angeles Dodgers staff. The Dodgers staff has a remarkable earned run average of less than two and a half earned runs per nine innings. Ground ball right toward the middle, beyond the reach of Rogers, into center field, a base hit. So Fisher delivers a base hit, a ground single to center. Snaps the string for Bob Friend. He had retired nine straight hitters. Harry Walker had been saying all along when the Pirates were having their troubles, when they lost 20 out of 24 and had an eight-game losing streak, that it had not been the fault of the pitching. It had been defensive lapses and a lack of hitting. And it certainly is borne out in this week's sporting news figures on team pitching performances. Then the Pirates start putting it all together, getting the hitting, the fielding, and the pitching. And they ripped off a 12-game win streak. It's thrown to Bobby Klaus, a breaking ball off the outside corner. One ball and no strikes. Eddie Cranebull kneeling in the on-deck circle. Fisher takes his lead. Here's the pitch, and it's popped up. Might be playable, a foul ball. Glenn Dunham drifting over to the field box railing, but it's out of reach. Field boxes in this ballpark, Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, come right up to the lines almost. Very little room in foul territory, except directly behind home plate. It always gives the pitcher a little bit more when he's working in a ballpark where you have a lot of room in foul territory between first and third. Or from first to round to third, I should say. The 1-1 one, one delivery, a swing and a miss on a high hard one. One and two on Bobby Klaus. Bobby single to left center leading off the ball game. Bounced out to third in the third inning. We're in the fifth inning. Pittsburgh won New York nothing. Foul ball. He got that one twice, getting it a second time on the back ledge. Four hits, New York. No runs, three hits. As the Mets hit against Friend here in the top of the fifth inning. Now the pitch on the way. Strike three called. He got him with a breaking ball on the outside corner. Bob Friend picking up his first strike out of the game. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Now we've come halfway at the end of four and a half innings to score. Pittsburgh won. The New York Mets nothing. Say, are you planning to visit the World's Fair this year? Well, we certainly hope so. And if you are, get a free Shell World's Fair map and walking guide from your Shell dealer. It's the only map of the World's Fair that tells you how much time you need to walk from place to place and see the things you want to see. How long will you spend at the Ford Pavilion? What's the quickest way from the Unisphere to the Belgian village? How long does the Swiss sky ride take? Will you have time to see the free Florida water ski show? How many minutes will you take to walk from the Spanish Pavilion to General Motors? And how long do the fireworks last? Well, don't guess. You can get all the answers from the free Shell World's Fair map and walking guide. The only map of the World's Fair that tells you how much time you need to go where you want and see what you want. So make the most of your time at the fair. Ask your Shell dealer for a World's Fair map and walking guide. You can't buy these maps, but they're free. While stocks last at all your local Shell stations. Another service from your Shell dealer. Service is his business. Andre Rogers 
will be up against Jack Fisher in the bottom half of the fifth inning. He lined into a double play in the second inning with a line drive to McMillan. They were playing hit and run, and Mack then pegged across to first to double up Mazeroski. High fly to right field, fairly deep. Back to the wall goes Johnny Lewis. He jumps, and he can't make the play as the base hit off the wall. Rogers goes into second base with a high fly ball to the opposite field, over the head of Johnny Lewis and off the wall. And he continues an amazing hot streak. Right here we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Your station for all the Mets games, WGY, 8, 10 on the dial, Schenectady. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kander. The Pirates have a threat going. Del Crandall up against Jack Fisher. And the pitch is low and away, ball one. Well, veteran Andy Rogers was acquired from Chicago for reserve strength. Then the Bucks traded Dick Schofield for Jose Pagan. And Pagan suffered a slight muscle pull. Rogers got a chance to play. And he's hit about 400 in the last 12 games. Ground ball bounced slowly past Jack Fisher. Charged by McMillan. The peg to first in time for the out. Mets were fortunate to have a man slow a foot going down the line on that slow bouncer just beyond Fisher's reach. Good play by Roy McMillan. One out and one out, and that'll bring up the pitcher, Bob Friend. Friend is 0 for 1. He tried to bunt a runner over. But the lead runner, Crandall, was forced in the third inning, so he was charged with a time at bat. Now the pitcher on the way. Blow it outside, ball one. In Milwaukee, the Braves got two runs in the first inning off Claude Osteen. The Dodgers and Braves are tied 2-2 at the end of one inning. Foul ball hit back into the crowd. One ball, one strike on friend. nothing, St. Louis nothing at the end of an inning and a half in St. Louis. Bob Bruce against Bob Gibson. Gibson shooting for his ninth win of the year. And the Astros have a new first baseman in Diamond Jim Gentile. He's playing first to in St. Louis and batting cleanup. Walter Bond has gone to left field and is hitting third. The 1-1 pitch. A swing and a miss on a low curve in the count one and two. Hill's biggest year was playing for Paul Richards in Baltimore his second year. When he hit 44 home runs and knocked in 146 runs. Now Fisher up in pitching position. Delivers to Friend. Outside and low, it's two and two. In Cincinnati, Johnny Edwards is hit his eighth home run of the year. He's off to quite a start, and it was a three-run homer off Gaylord Perry. So the Reds lead the Giants 3-0, batting in the last half of the second. Cincinnati continues to have the highest team batting average in Major League Baseball. The 2-2 delivery, a scribbler foul off the bat coming right straight back. Right here, it's Pittsburgh 1, New York nothing, bottom half of the fifth inning. Andy Rogers on second, one man out. Now Fisher at two and two delivers. Foul ball. And Fred is hanging tough against Jack Fisher. Johnny Pesky is the first base coach, and Alex Grammis, the third base coach for Harry the Hat Walker. delivery. Ground ball flanked down to third, taken by Charlie Smith. He holds the runner. 
throws to first, and there are two away. Ball hit rather sharply by Bob Friend, caught in the webbing of the glove by Charlie Smith, when it took a little bit of a bad hop. Bob Bailey coming up. Bailey had a single in the third, one hit and two times at bat. Checks his runner, Andy Rogers. Now the pitch to Bailey, low and outside as he works the breaking ball away from him. Bailey pulls the ball, and the must play him deep around toward left in the outfield. The big gap is the alley in right center. An off-speed pitch outside, two balls and no strikes. So now Jack is behind on a dangerous hitter, Bob Bailey. Two balls and no strikes. Last year was Bailey's sophomore year in Major League Baseball, and it was a good year. He didn't feel the jinx. He wound up hitting 281. Too high. Another off-speed pitch, and it goes to 3 and nothing on Bob Bailey. Bill Verdon is the on-deck hitter. Took it all away. It goes to three and one. Don Glendennon's double and Bill Mazeroski's run scoring hit, providing the only run scored so far in the game. Pitching three and one. Whacked on the ground a third. A big hop for Charlie Smith. Smitty's pegged the first, a good one, and the side is out. So Fisher continues to work well under fire. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Five innings complete, and as the ground crew comes out to manicure the infield for the second half of the game, the score, the Pittsburgh Pirates won, and the New York Mets, nothing. Well, Casey was mighty happy to welcome Charlie Smith back to the Mets lineup. Charlie, over a 17-game span, hit 377 and knocked 14 runs in. Then he came down with a throat infection and a bad cold that kept him out of the Chicago series. But Smitty returned to the lineup tonight and had, last night, and had two hits in the same inning. He'll enjoy reading all about Charlie Smith's baseball career in the revised edition of the 1965 New York Mets yearbook. It contains all the up-to-date facts and figures on our amazing Mets, plus some 258 action photographs. The lifetime records of all the Mets, including the first-year men, there in complete detail. And a special section on Yogi and Warren Spahn. To get the new 1965 Mets yearbook, send in 50 cents to Mets yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. That's Mets yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. Mets yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. America's Gemini 4 has set two world space firsts. At 9.36 p.m., Gemini 4 passed the American 22.9 orbit duration record set by Gordon Cooper in May 16, 1963. At 9.41 p.m., the Divot and White logged more time in space, 68 hours and 51 minutes, than the total log by all eight previous astronauts. Now we 
go to the sixth thing, and Eddie Crane pulled us up against Bob Friend. Ground ball bounced over the mound towards second, taken by Mazeroski. He whips to Clint Denham, and Green Pool is out. The Mets have not had a runner beyond second base against Bob Friend. Joe Christopher has flied to center and flied to right, nothing for two. It's amazing how tough Friend is against New York. He's always been a real good major league pitcher. Against the Mets, he has been a Hall of Fame type hurler. Pitch to Christopher. Right in for a call strike. He picked off the inside corner of the letters. Friend will very rarely hurt himself by losing control. He hasn't walked a hitter in the ball game. a lot of sliders, breaking pitches, moves the ball around, and he can get it just about where he wants it on any pitch. And the curve is on the outside corner, strike two. Fastball in the inside corner, a curve on the outside corner as he works in and out on Joe Christopher. on deck and then Charlie Smith. Two strike delivery. Just missed the outside corner. It's one and two. Joe tried to bunny his way on base his last time up and almost pulled it off, but it rolled foul down the third baseline at the last moment. Joe is probably the best bunner on the club. The one-two pitch. Hammered hard toward the middle, a base at the center. So Christopher keeps his hitting streak alive. He's now hit straight, hit in 11 straight ball games. One out and one on. Christopher reaching on a single to center. All four of the Mets hits have been singles, and they've all been ground singles. Johnny Lewis is up. He hit a ground single through the hole on the right side of the infield in the first. Fly to left in the fourth inning. Inside the high. One ball and no strikes. Detroit leading Cleveland six to five. They're on the last of the eighth inning in Cleveland now. Here's the pitch by a friend. A swing and a foul tip. One ball, one strike. White Sox and the Yankees are in the seventh inning. No score. Pitching duel between Joe Horland and Bill Stafford. Bob Allison has gone in front, or has put Minnesota in front at least 2 nothing with a home run in the second. Coplitz pitching for Washington, caught for the Twins. The 1-1 pitch off the outside corner, 2-1 and one to Johnny Lewis. Red Sox and the A's rained out in Kansas City. That may not be the only storm in Kansas City. There be, might be quite a storm about Jim Gentile being sold to Houston. Baltimore and Los Angeles later tonight. 2-1 delivery. Foul ball back over the screen into the crowd. And it's 2-2 two two on Johnny Lewis. nothing as they bat against friend here in the top half of the sixth inning. The 2-2 pitch is high and the string is out three and two. Now let's keep an eye on Joe Christopher and see if Casey has him running on three and two with one out. Crouched behind the plate, giving the sign for the 3-2 delivery. Infield and the outfield, just about straight away against Lewis. There he goes. Here's the pitch, a ground ball. It's down to third. The play will have to be to first base. In time, almost a high throw. 
It started to take off, but Clint Bennett, who plays the gateway for the Bucks, stands six feet four inches. But by playing hit and run, the Mets stay out of the double play and move the tying run into scoring position with Charlie Smith coming up. This is the second time in the game the Mets have had a runner as far as second. The other occasion was in the first inning. coming out on deck. Mets trying to pick up that tying run from second base. Pitch by Friend, a swing and a miss on a breaking ball that was down around the knees. A real tough pitch made by Friend. Pittsburgh, one run, five hits. New York, no runs, four hits. It's the sixth inning. toward the alley in right center. Clemente racing for it, won't be able to get it. An extra base hit rolling back toward the gate in deep right center. The game's tied up as Smitty digs for third. He's in standing up with a run scoring triple. Charlie Smith hitting a long drive to right center on the fly. That ball carried well over 400 feet. Landed close to the warning track out by the gates in right center field and ties up the ball game. It's one to one as Jim Hickman steps in. What a job Charlie Smith has been doing. That's Charlie's 21st run batted in. Now Hickman hoping to put New York in front. Bucks have the infield back deep with two men down. The pitch by a friend, a swing and a miss and a curve, strike one. base hit for the Mets and it ties things up. Here's the pitch to Jim Hickman. Jim leans in him and lets it go and it breaks outside. One ball, one strike. Jim 0 for 6 in the Pirate Series after winning the hitting laurels in the Cub Series. is over his head. He lets it go at a count. Two balls and a strike. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh scored in the second inning on a double by Clint Denon and a run scoring hit by Mazeroski. Pittsburgh. How about that? Now a 2-1 delivery. A high fly ball to rather deep right scooting back as Clemente. He's under it waiting in deep right and makes the catch. The side is out. New York tied it up. One run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of five and a half innings, the New York Mets won and the Pittsburgh Pirates won. Say, if you've been wondering what Swedish Americans sing after the smorgasbord, listen to this. song that Swedish Americans sing over and over at their parties and picnics until they raise a fearful thirst. Then they change their tune. Helan <laughs> Gore is a traditional Swedish drinking song, and often the beer they drink is Rheingold Extra Dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more Swedes than in all of Huskvarna, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Swedish Americans like Rheingold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. Pittsburgh will have two, three, and four in the batting order facing Jack Fisher in the last of the sixth inning. Center fielder Bill Burden has fouled out to McMillan, who caught the ball across the line down behind third. 
And bow stop to Eddie Cranepool. Bell hitting 290. The game tied one to one. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Here's the pitch by Fisher. A foul tipped. He just nicked it off the end of the bat. Strike one. The paid crowd for tonight's game, 11,026. A day game tomorrow with Gary Kroll opposing Vernon Law. And we'll be on with the broadcast tomorrow afternoon at 1.30. Fast ball, a strike on the outside corner. Fisher now with a two-strike advantage on Bill Verdon. Roberto Clemente is on deck, and then Willie Stargell. delivery. Change up a slip pitch and he struck him out. Beautiful pitch by Fisher. He threw in the slipper. First strike out by Fisher. Each hurler now is notched one and the hitter is Roberto Clemente. Well, he's been up twice and twice the Mets have made a good play on him. Took a big swing and hit a slow roller and was thrown out on a good play by Charlie Smith in the first. And Bobby Klaus made a leaping grab of a hard hit line drive in the third. Black hard down to third, a big hop for Charlie Smith. The throw to first in time, and Clemente is out. He hit down on that first pitch throw and took a long high bounce down toward third. Two outs, nobody on. Willie Stargell coming up. Stargell has bounced to second, reached on a walk. He walked leading off in the last of the fourth inning, but it was erased when Glenn Denon bounced into a double play started by Jack Fisher. Game tied one to one, last half of the sixth. High foul fly. It'll be over into the crowd behind the third base dugout. No play. Sox and the Yankees go to the eighth inning. No score. Horland against Stafford. Foul tipped. Trying to hold up on the swing on a low curve and just nicked it foul off the end of the bat. So Fisher now with a two-strike count on Willie Stargell. Stargell, a strong left-hand hitter. And he's team time that he has come up. Jack has been trying to pitch away from him over the outside corner. Here's the windup. Two strike pitch. Just missed with a fastball on the inside corner. He jammed him with that one. He got out in front working outside and then came inside with a fastball. One ball and two strikes. setting up the target. The pitch on the way. A bouncing ball hits on the right side of the diamond. Taken on the knee-high hop by Bobby Klaus. He throws to Cranepool and the side is out. Good inning by Jack Fisher. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Six innings complete. The score of the Mets won and the Pirates won. And Lindsey Nelson will be with you in just a moment to detail every exciting play the rest of the way. Can you imagine a Puerto Rican party without music? Don't try. Just listen to this. Temporal is a song Puerto Ricans sing over and over at their parties and picnics until they raise a fearful thirst. Then they change that tune. Chorial is the song a Puerto Rican drinks to. He'll sit down, call for a beer, probably Rhine Gold Extra Dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more Puerto Ricans than in all of San Juan, more people drink Rhine Gold than any other beer. And Rhine Gold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Puerto Ricans like Rhine Gold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. <laughs> Go 
going now to the top half of the seventh, and the New York Mets have Roy McMillan up to lead off. Mack is batting number seven in the batting order. He has flied to center and flied to right so far tonight. Both starting pitchers are still in the ballgame. Bob Friend on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Looks into Del Crandall to get a sign, and here's the first pitch of the seventh inning, and it's in there for a call strike one. Score tied here, 1-1. One, one. As we go to the seventh, second game of a five-game set here at Forbes Field between the Mets and the Pirates. Chris Canizero kneeling in the on-deck circle as Robert Friend delivers. And it's swung on and lined into left field for a base hit. Stargell over, up with it, plays it back, and Mack takes the wide turn and holds it first with a line shot single to the left. Bob Bailey stretched out trying to get a glove on it and just missed at third base. Brings up Chris Canizero, who was on on an error by Bailey in the second inning and grounded out third to first in the fifth. He looks down to third base coach Don Hefner to see if he is sacrificing. Pitcher Jack Fisher is due up next. Fisher had a base hit in the top half of the fifth inning. Canizero is a right-hand batter. Fisher looks in to get a sign now from Del Crandall. McMillan leads at first base and the pitch. In for a call second. He was not running on that pitch. Glenn Dillon at first was holding the runner until the pitch and then came charging and Bailey was ready to charge at third but Canizero was not running on that pitch. Strike one. Nobody out. Friend again is up and set. Pitch is taken high for a ball. <laughs> Canizero started the swing and checked it at the last moment. <laughs> Steve Carpin, uh, Frank Carpin, is throwing in the bullpen for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Left-hander. delivery he squares the button it's a pitch out so he takes it outside two and one they had the sacrifice on on that pitch but Del Crandall was trying to read the intent and call for the pitch out Canizero having a little trouble reading the sign of Hefner so he steps out of the batter's box to be sure he has it right Jack Fisher wearing the jackets, kneeling in the on-deck circle. It's a little nippy here now at Pittsburgh. Temperature has skidded a little bit in the last hour or so. McMillan leads it first. Here's the pitch to Canizero, and it's in for a call strike. He was not running. It's two and two. Brian Carpet continues to throw in the Pittsburgh Pirate bullpen as we have reached the seventh inning of this ball game. playing a deep third base now for the Pirates with the count two and two to Canizero. The 2-2 two -two pitch. And it's taken low and away. It is a full count now, three and two. With nobody out, let's see now if McMillan is running on the pitch. Ben looks into Del Crandall. Millen takes his lead. Back running, and the pitch is low and away. He walked in. And now the indication is that the ball clicked off his bat, and he fouled it off just barely. It was back into the glove of Crandall, but that returns McMillan to first base, and the count holds three and two to Chris Canizero. Pitch was low and away, and Canizero started down to first, and umpire Al Barling behind the plate spread his arms out on either side, indicating that it had been tipped into the glove, just barely, of Del Crandall. McMillan was running on the 3-2 pitch with nobody out. He takes his lead again as Friend is off the stretch. Max running, the pitch is low, and he walked him this time for sure. So McMillan pulls up safely at second, and Canizero goes to first with the base on balls. 
We are still in a sacrifice situation with pitcher Jack Fisher coming up, and we pass for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WGY, a ton of the dials connected. The time is one minute past ten. Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, where the Mets now have runners at first and second with nobody out, and Jack Fisher's up. Jack is one for two tonight. Pirates, of course, have to protect against the likelihood of the sacrifice, so they bring Glenn Dunn on, in on the grass at first. They have Bob Bailey in on the grass at third base. And a pickoff attempt, but to no avail, as Mazeroski moved over to take it, and... Back safely is Roy McMillan. Both Rogers and Matt were hanging around the bag, and as Rogers quickly moved to his position, hoping to bring McMillan with him, Mazeroski went to the bag and took the pickoff attempt. Again, the stretch and the pitch, and it's one on and fouled off for strike one. So there was no sacrifice on the first pitch. Fisher was swinging away, and he fouled it off for strike one. Jack now looks down to Don Hefner again to read his sign to see if manager Stengel is alternating. Having had him take a cut on one pitch, he might very well switch off to the sacrifice on the second pitch. And he squares the button, does button down the first baseline. Clendon throws to third, and in time for the fourth. McMillan is forced as Andre Rogers took the throw there. Fisher becomes the runner at first, and Chris Canizero moves to second. But the first baseman, Clendon, came in to field the ball in a hurry and fire on to Andre Rogers, the shortstop who covered third for the fourth. So with one man out, runners hold first and second now, and Bobby Klaus is coming up. Fisher trying to sacrifice. He is charged, of course, with a time at bat. Bobby Klaus had a leadoff single in the top half of the first inning. Since then, he has grounded out short to first and was called out on strike. The score is tied, 1-1. One, one. We're in the top half of the seventh inning. Harris got a run in the second. The Mets got a run in the sixth. in to read the sign of Del Crandall. Wren has won three games this year, and he's lost three. Up and set with runners leading at first and second. The pitch to Klaus, and it is fouled off at strike one. It was a check swing. Kneeling in the on-deck circle for the Mets is Ed Cranepool. tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 p.m. New York time with the third game of this five-game set between the Mets and the Pirates. Tomorrow, Vernon Law will be pitching for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Gary Crow for the Mets. Here's a strike one delivery to Klaus, and it's low one inside. It's one and one. Bob Friend has walked only one in this game. He has struck out only one. That was Klaus in the fifth inning. Said runners lead. The 1-1 one, one pitch. High for a ball. It's 2-1. So friend goes behind now to the Met leadoff man Bobby Klaus. At the end of three and a half innings now, going to the bottom of the fourth, the Dodgers two and the Milwaukee Braves two. Claude Osteen against Wade Blassing game. And going to the bottom of the fourth in St. Louis, no score. The Houston Astros and the St. Louis Cardinals. Bob Bruce against Bob Gibson. Now, friend with a 2-1 delivery, swung on it on the ground to third. Taken by Bailey, he goes to Mass for one, and he drops the ball. Uh, but he was throwing and coming on home now is the another run is Canizero as the Mets go ahead 2-1. to one. Here was the play, a ground ball to third, ba Bailey fired over to Mazeroski, and Mass took the throw for the fourth out on Fisher and started to throw and drop the ball. 
The out throw was made by Stan Landis as the ball moved out into short center field. Canazero dashed for home with the go-ahead tally, and on at first base with two men out is Bobby Cloud. The Mets lead by a score of 2-1. to one. It is the umpire's judgment as to whether or not the ball is dropped before the force is made or after the force is made and while the pivot man is trying to get the ball out of his glove to make the peg on. And it was the considered judgment of San Landis that already Fisher had been forced. However, for allowing the run to score, Mazeroski is charged with an error. Larry Bernard gets up in the Mets bullpen now. Here is the pitch and it's low for ball. Bernard gets up because Fisher was sliding in pretty hard at second base and he uh, limped a little bit as he came off the field. So down in the bullpen area, they get Bernard up just in case. Rainpool is up there with two men out. And there's a count of ball one to him. Now the pitch to the left-hand batter. Hit on the ground towards second, and Mazeroski moves over, up with it, plays on to first in time, and the side is out. But... The Mets picked up a run on a hit. There was an error, and there was one left. And the score at the end of six and a half innings is the Mets two and the Pirates one. And now it's time for another unusual fact from the Viceroy Hall of Records. 1922, the Cubs and the Phils played one of the wildest games you'll ever hear about. They just about needed a policeman to direct traffic at home plate. By the end of the game, Chicago had knocked in 23 runs. But get this. They lost. That's right. Because Philadelphia brought home 26 runs. And if you want to bring home the taste that's right in filter smoking, it's Viceroy. You see, Viceroy is specifically designed to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Viceroy is not too strong, like some brands that taste as if they didn't have a filter, and not too light, like some others. You know the kind. They just don't seem to satisfy your taste. But Viceroy... Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the filter for the taste that's right. Viceroy's got the taste that's right, not too strong and not too light. Pittsburgh, Jack Fisher has not yet come out of the Met dugout. He has been receiving attention down there in the dugout. Manager Casey Singler came out to have a word with late umpire Al Barley. And Larry Bernard continues to throw in the Met bullpen. And also up down there now is Larry Miller, a left-hander throwing along with Bernard. The public address announcer is asking that a gold Met sign hanging from the railing in right field be removed. So uh, they do as they did before. They just swing it over and they leave it inside the railing. There are several Met banners around the ballpark here tonight in Pittsburgh. Fisher still has not come out of the dugout. Yogi Berra is there talking to manager Casey Stengel. Casey is outside the dugout. Umpire Al Barley goes over there as well. It's entirely possible, and this is only a guess, it's entirely possible that Fisher was cut on the slide as he went into second base because he sort of got mixed up in Mazeroski there, and Maz dropped the ball, and it rolled out into short center field. And then Fisher was limping when he came off the field. Canizero, of course, scampered home with the go-ahead run. But apparently Fisher still is receiving attention. And now he comes out of the dugout. Here comes Jack Fisher just coming out and heading for the mound. So he is apparently staying in this ball game. Casey Stengel is following him out there. Uh, Casey would like to know that he is in the best of shape because we're going to the top half of the eighth inning. Pittsburgh Pirates, or rather to the uh, bottom half of the seventh inning, I beg your pardon. The Pittsburgh Pirates will have Don Clendon and Bill Mazeroski and Andre Rogers. Coming up here in the bottom half of the seventh. Remember, Viceroy is not too strong and not too light. Viceroy has got the filter for the taste that's right. So far this evening, the Pirates have reached Jack Fisher for one run on five hits. Fisher has struck out one and walked one. He's throwing easily and apparently it's all right. 
Dingo turns, comes back to the dugout. Charlie Smith comes over from his position at third to have a word with Jack Fisher. Double barrel action continues in the Met bullpen. coming around to lead off. He had a double and scored the pirate run in the bottom half of the second inning. He has great speed. Jack Fisher, as we guessed, picked up two spike marks on his left leg in sliding in to second base, and he was receiving attention for those. Now Clinton is up for the pirate. He hit into a double play in the bottom of the court. Jack Fisher deals a pitch, and it's low for a ball. Dunnan has a batting average of 337. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Outside low, it's 2-0 and as Fisher goes behind.
strike count to Rogers. Wide stance at the plate. Has the bat caught. As Orosky leads, and here's the pitch. Vaughn hit on the ground to third. Charlie Smith up to cross for one. The throw on, a double play. A 5-4-3 double play that retires the side. No run. One hit, no errors, none left. And the score at the end of seven innings is the Mets two and the Pirates one. Now let's check on the action elsewhere. First in the National League. At the end of four innings of play, it is the Dodgers two and the Milwaukee Braves two. Claude Osteen against Wade Blasting game. In the three and a half innings, the Houston Astros nothing, the St. Louis Cardinals nothing. Bob Bruce against Bob Gibson. At the end of four innings of play, the Cincinnati Reds three and the San Francisco Giants nothing. Gaylord Perry against Joey Jay. Johnny Edwards has the free run homer for Cincinnati in the second inning. And this afternoon, the Philadelphia Phillies shut off the Chicago Cubs six nothing on a five hitter by Jim Bunny. Larry Jackson started and took the loss. Abernathy in the third. Coots in the seventh. Humphreys in the ninth. Wes Covington had a two-run homer for the Phil. Over in the American League, tonight the Cleveland Indians beat the Detroit Tigers 7-6 as Siebert was the winner in relief and Seri was the loser. K-Line had a homer and so did Gonzalez. Going to the bottom of the ninth, the White Sox nothing, the Yankees nothing. Joe Harlan against Bill Stafford. The end of three and a half, it's the Minnesota Twins two and the Washington Senators one. Coppers against Cott, Allison and Hall have had Minnesota home runs. Boston Red Sox had Kansas City postpone rain. Baltimore had Los Angeles against the Angels in a latest start. And right here at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, it is the New York Mets two, the Pittsburgh Pirates one. Mets batting in the top of the eighth. Number three man in the batting order, Joe Christopher up. Christopher kept his hitting streak alive last time up with the ground single up the middle, and he later scored the first Met run. Bob Friends pitches in as Joe Christopher bluffs the butt and doesn't offer. It's a call strike in the strike zone. The Mets are scheduled to send up here in the top of the eighth, Joe Christopher, Johnny Lewis, and Charlie Smith. Bob Friend with the pitch, sidearms this time low, and it's 1-1. That's why you're out in front, and that's why you want to pennant. 
Last year it was the Philadelphia Phillies who were doing that. They got ever so close and then didn't, and this year they haven't been doing that. The very same moves that they made last year have turned out differently this season for the Bills so far. Here is the pitch now. And it is low for a ball, runs the count to three and two. To Joe Christopher, the 2-2 pitch was low. Johnny Lewis waiting on deck. And the playoff pitch. Swung on and foul back as Christopher protects the plate. Down holds full at three and two. Christopher's leading off for the Mets in the top of the eighth. There's a ball out there in front of the plate, high in the air, and beats it out. They still call it the Lloyd Wayner hit here at Forbes Field. Here's a pitch swung on and popped up. Back of first in foul territory. Clendenon has a play, and he one hands it right over the railing for the out. So Christopher fouls out to first. One away, and Johnny Lewis is coming up. Johnny Lewis had a ground single to the right side. He fired to left, and he grounded out third to first. He's one for three. for a ball. White Sox and the Yankees are going into extra innings with a scoreless tie. Right here, the Mets are leading the Pirates 2-1. to one. Breaking ball low. 2-0 to Johnny Lewis. The first game that the Mets ever won was here at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. In 1962, their first year, the Mets Lost nine straight and then got a win here at Fort Field as Jay Hook with the winning pitcher. Here's a swing and a fly ball deep to left, way back there, and going back to Stargell, and he's near the scoreboard and hauls it down for the out. That ball is hit deep to left. Well, there are a lot of ballparks in which that would have been a home run. But Fort Field is one of the more spacious ballparks, and it goes for a long out. Two away, not Charlie Smith up. Charlie had a booming triple to right center to drive in the first Met run in the top of the sixth. That came with two men out, and he died at third base. Charlie had two hits last night coming back to the lineup after having been sidelined with a respiratory infection. Batting 282 for the season. And this pitch is low for a ball. It's 1-0. Americans like Rheingold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. I'm a man you don't need every day, every day. I'm a man you don't need every day. As we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning, the Pirates are going to their bench right now, sending up Manny Mota to bat for Del Crandall. 
takes the lead at first and Crane Poole holding against the runner. Off the stretch. Fisher with the pitch and it's low for a ball. Canizero Bluff does not go to first base. McBean still throwing in the bullpen for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jack Fisher again up in set. Throws over. Not in time and a little high. That one failed on him and Crane Poole had to pull it down. Third baseman backs up the return throw. Now the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball in there. Good pitch. And it's 1-1. To Bob Bailey with Bill Burton waiting in the on-deck circle. Manager Harry Walker up and moving around in the pirate dugout. Fisher checks his runner at first and throws over again, trying to keep motor close to that bag as he possibly can. Got the ball, Bailey at the plate is one ball and one strike. The pitch is high. He started to go and laid off, and Canizero again bluffed the throw down to first, didn't offer. Fisher goes behind the Bob Bailey, two balls and one strike. Down to Alex Samuels for his side here. Let's have the defense one around toward left, playing Bob Bailey to pull. Fisher steps off the rubber, and Harry Moda goes back. Now the pitch. Well, on it on the ground, and off to the left. Harry Moda on second and holds there, and Christopher drops the ball, picks it up. Moda still holds. And Bob Bailey is on with a ground single through the hole between Smith and McMillan into left field. And the Pirates have run at first and second, and we pass the station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. The Mets games come to you over WGY, 810 of the mile, Schenectady. The time now, 10.32. Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. The Mets have a one-run lead here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. But the Pirates have runners at first and second with one man out. And left-hand batter Bill Burton is at the plate. Fisher's pitch is low for a ball. Larry Bernard is still working in the bullpen for the Mets. On deck for the Pirates, Roberto Clemente. Runner's lead and the pitch is outside. He goes behind to Bill Burton, two and all. The Mets two, the Pirates one. Fisher 
Harris is trying to work carefully to Roberto Clemente, who was the batting champion of the National League last year. Runners lead first and third. 1-1 one, one delivery. Breaking ball. Hit on the ground to short. McMillan has it. Crosses to Klaus for the out. The side is retired. An underhand toss to Bobby Klaus. In time to force Bill Burton. And the Pirates are out after threatening. They got no runs on two hits. There were no errors and two left. And the score at the end of eight full innings is... The Mets two and the Pirates one. Well, the Mets will be opening up a big home stand. At Shea Stadium on Tuesday night, the San Francisco Giants will be in with Willie Mays and company. So, if you'd like to purchase tickets for any of the upcoming games, the advanced ticket window at Shea Stadium is open seven days a week. It is located, incidentally, at Entrance D at Shea Stadium, in case you're there looking for it. There's a Mets ticket office at Pennsylvania Station and another at the Grand Central Terminal. There's a Mets ticket office at Macy's in Huntington for the special convenience of Long Island. It's open during regular store hours. Reservations can be made for box and reserve seats at any of the Howard Clover stores in the greater New York area. There is instant reservation service now available at all Child's restaurants and Calico Kitchen in the New York area. Al McBean is the pitcher now for the Pittsburgh Pirates in the ninth inning. Bob Friend was removed for the pinch hitter. Pagliaroni is the catcher. You'll recall that Sando was a move for a as well as Fred. Pagliaroni will bat eight, and McBean will bat ninth. Bob Fred worked eight innings, in which he gave up two runs. On six hits, he struck out one and he walked one. McBean will be facing Jim Hickman, Roy McMillan, and Chris Cantatero. In Milwaukee, at the end of five and a half, it is the Dodgers two and the Braves two. In St. Louis, at the end of five, it is the Cardinals one and the Astros nothing. At the end of five innings, Cincinnati and San Francisco, it was the Reds three and the Giants nothing. However, Willie McCovey has just hit a two-run homer in the sixth inning for the Giants. So it's now Cincinnati three and the Giants two. This afternoon, the Phil shut out the Cubs six nothing. Now to the action here in the top half of the ninth inning. Jim Hickman in for the Mets. Al McBean delivers the pitch. Low for a ball. And Pagliaroni goes out to the mound to get checked out now with McBean. Apparently he was not fully checked out on the side. <laughs> McBean is making his 22nd game appearance in the young season. Two and four losses. Here's a swing and a foul ball. One and one to Jim Hickman. However, McBean has had eight saves and an earned run average of 1.99. He's the number one reliever of the Pittsburgh Mountain Jim Hickman is nothing for three in the ninth game. One ball and two strikes to Jim Hickman. Tomorrow afternoon, we'll be here at 1.30 p.m. Radio and television coverage of the Mets and the Pirates. And we'll bring you both games of the Sunday doubleheader, which will conclude the current road trip. <laughs> One, two deliveries. Missed outside. Two balls, two strikes to Jim Hickman with Roy McMillan waiting on deck. Foul by about a foot way down there. 
Well, the count holds it 2-2. Already the bat boy had been out and uh, taken the bat back to the rack. So Hickman has to go over to the bat rack to get his bat back. The bat boy figured he was off and running. Jim uses the pine tar rag there on the handle for a moment. Takes the weighted bat. Swings it and uh, flips it back to Roy McMillan as he comes on up with a 2-2 count. Looks as though Jim Hickman might have an extra base hit. But it went foul. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Missing low and away, and it's a full count of three and two. Top half of the night, the Mets two and the Pirates one. And the payoff pitch is low, and Hickman draws a leadoff walk here. And the top half of the ninth inning. Get a base runner with nobody out, and the Pirates now have to protect against the possibility of the sacrifice with McMillan coming up. Mack is one for three tonight. McMillan is considered to be an excellent bunny. with the first pitch to the big left-hand batter is in there for a call strike. 
Virgil has grounded out, walked, and grounded out so far. Larry Bernard is up and throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Bottom half of the ninth inning with the Mets leading by a score of 2-1. to one. Jack Fisher's pitch is low for a ball. It's 1-1 one and one now. Sergio Clendenon and Mazeroski scheduled up here in the bottom of the ninth for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pitch is swung on and pops up foul, and Canizero might have a play. He gets rid of the mask and comes back. He's underneath, and he makes the catch. With a lot of white showing out of the big glove as he made the grab. But Sergio has fouled out to the catcher. That ball slipped just as it hit in the pocket of the glove, and it looked as though Canizero had about one finger holding it in there. But that's all you need if you do, in fact, hold it in there. So Don Clendenon is up now. He has doubled, hit into a double play, and grounded out. Off to a great start this season for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tall, rangy, right-hand batter. And Fisher's pitch. It's hung on. It's a little never foul. Back and out of play. Just chopped it back. Camazero alertly was out there to pounce on it. It's a strike one count. Bill Mazeroski kneeling in the on-deck circle for the Pirates. Going to the bottom of the sixth in Milwaukee. They're still tied with the Dodgers 2-2. Janet tying away for a ball. One and one. Going to the bottom of the sixth in Cincinnati. It is the red two, and the red three, and the giant two. Jack Fisher with a one-one delivery to Clint Dunnan. One on and there. Slider and a good pitch. One and two. Going to the bottom of the sixth in St. Louis. It's Houston two and the Cardinals one. Bill shut out the Cubs 6-0 this afternoon. Jack Fisher with the 1-2 delivery now to Clint Dunnan. High for a ball. It goes 2-2. One man out and nobody on base. Clint Dunnan has that bat cock. Fisher with the 2-2 delivery. Swung on and missed. He stuck him out. Jack Fisher with only his second strike out of this ballgame. Two men out. Nobody on base in the bottom of the ninth, and Mazeroski's coming up, but Maz is two for three tonight. He singled a drive on the pirate run in the bottom of the second. He grounded out third to first, and he loops the single into right center field. So the pirate captain is up with two men out and nobody on base. Fellow who was up once in the bottom of the ninth of a World Series and hit it out of the lot. Here's a pitch low for a ball. That was in 1960 when his home run in the bottom of the ninth against the Yankees gave the Pittsburgh Pirates the World Championship. Jack Fisher with the 1 0 delivery to the right hand batter. Swung on and hit on the ground to short. Taken by McMillan. Bobble. He does not throw. Charged against McMillan at shortstop. It was a hard hit ground ball, and Mac came up with it and dropped it in his haste to come up with it cleanly and throw on. He dropped the ball, so the Pirates stay alive. Andre Rogers will be the batter now. And we've got to get a runner, a runner at first base. Gene Alley is the runner. Running for Mazeroski at first base with Rogers coming up. Rogers is two for three. It's one for three in this game tonight. Fisher checks the runner at first and throws over, not in time. The Mets lead 2 1. Two men out, a runner at first. Here's the pitch to Andre Rogers, and it's in for a call strike. Rogers lined into a double play in the second inning. He doubled in the fifth, and he grounded into a double play in the seventh. Fisher off the stretch, and the pitch inside, and perhaps off the bat, perhaps clicked off the bat of Andre Rogers, as it seemed to, into the glove of Chris. 
first count is zero. Scoreboard indicates strike two on Andre Rogers. He was checking back on the swing, and it seemed to click right off his side into the glove on Chris Cantadero. No indication by Barley. Mazeroski leads at first base. Pitcher's pitch. Misses outside for a ball. Jim Pagliaroni is waiting in the on-deck circle. Larry Bernard continues to throw in the Met bullpen. Single up on the step to take a look out toward the bullpen. Now back in the Mets dugout. Jack Fisher's up and set. The pitch to Rogers. Swung on and missed. He struck him out to end the ball game. A strikeout for Fisher. He struck out two with a strong finish in the bottom of the ninth. And the New York Mets have won four straight ball games. They have taken the first two of the series from the park after having won two in Chicago. And in the bottom half of the ninth inning, the Pittsburgh Pirates had no runs, no hits. There was one net error and one pilot left. And so Jack Fisher has chalked up his fifth victory of the season to become the first Met pitcher to win five. The Mets winning this one by a score of two to one. Starting the night, it was Bob Fred against Jack Fisher, Bob Fran, a man with a record of 13 wins and only one loss in his career to the New York Mets, but Bob Fran is the man who gets the loss tonight. Fran has the start of work for eight innings and was touched for the two runs on six hits. He struck out one and he walked one, and then McBean came on to finish up. The Pittsburgh Pirates scored first in the ballgame off Fisher, went with one out in the bottom of the second. Don Clem done and double. Bill Mazeroski singled him home, and quickly the Pittsburgh Pirates had their run, as it turned out. It was their last run of the ball game. The New York Mets did not score until the top half of the sixth inning. Went with one out. Joe Christopher had a ground single up the middle to keep his consecutive game hitting streak alive at 11 straight. Johnny Lewis started out third first on a hit and run play that moved Christopher to second. And Charlie Smith then tripled up the alley in right center to tie the ball game 1-1. Hickman flied to right and Smith died at third. The New York Mets then scored the final run in what turned out to be the winning run in the top of the seventh when Roy McMillan lined a single into left field. Chris Cantazaro drew a walk. Jack Fisher attempted to sacrifice him. However, he bunted the ball to Clint Dunn, who made the force on McMillan at second with the throw to Rogers. Cantazaro moving to second. Fisher became the base runner at first. And then Bobby Cloud came up, hit a ball to third base, and Bailey came over and fired over to Maz at second. And sliding in with Jack Fisher. Matt had it long enough for the force and trying to get the ball out of his glove for the throw. It rolled out into short center field. And Canizaro scampered home with what proved to be the winning run. Fisher had a couple of spike marks on his right leg. He got attention in the dugout, but then came on to finish up the ball game. And he finished in strong style all too often. And the closing innings, the Mets have had their problems. But Fisher finished strongly in this ball game with two strikeouts in the bottom half of the ninth inning. So Fisher is the winner, and Friend is the loser. Final totals in the game for the New York Mets, two runs on six hits and one error. For the Pirates, one run on eight hits and two errors. The winner, Fisher, he's won five and lost four. The loser, Friend, he's won three and lost four games. Now let's check on scores of other games briefly. Cleveland beat Detroit 7-6, and the Yankees and the White Sox are going to the 11th inning, still no score. And going to the bottom of the sixth, it's Minnesota 3, Washington 1, Boston to Kansas City postponed. Rain the warm-ups in Los Angeles, Pappas against Lopez. This game was brought to you by Rheingold, New York City's largest selling beer. And what a remarkable thing that is. In New York, a city of so many different people with different tastes, one beer has become the favorite. Rheingold Extra Dry. We don't know why so many people like our beer, but we must be doing something right, and we'll keep right on doing it. Tonight's game was also brought to you by Viceroy. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. Get in on baseball land, there are no fans so grand as our men. When we play other teams, no one but Burley screams at our men.
Pirates tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 p.m. New York time as the Mets again meet the Pittsburgh Pirates here at Forbes Field. Tonight's game was brought to you in cooperation with Sports Network. Our engineer was Sandy Alper. Our statistician, Matt Winnick. Our producer, Joe Gallagher. Our executive producer, Joel Nixon. The final score again, the Mets 2, the Pirates 1. The Mets have won four in a row, and they have won four on this road trip, the most they have ever won on a road trip. So until tomorrow afternoon, speaking for Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner, this is Lindsey Nelson saying so long. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WGY, a tunnel of aisles, Schenectady. Stay tuned for 15 minutes of news, sports, and weather at 11 o'clock. Until that time, let's listen to the music of David Rose. will be held at Lenton High School for six weeks beginning June 28th. This program, which offers both recreational and educational experiences for children from 8 to 14, is available five days a week from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you are interested, call the SAC director at Oneida School today. This is NBC News. The American astronauts are breaking records. NBC Radio News on the Hour, brought to you by Pet Canned Milk. For cooking, coffee, and for babies, Pet makes the best things happen. Now here is Bob Wilson. Tonight's top story, less than 40 to go. The two astronauts have completed 22 orbits of the globe. Less than an hour ago, they began the 23rd, with splashdown still set to follow completion of 62 orbits. Command pilot James McDivitt reported seeing a strange object whirling in space. It seemed to have big arms sticking out. He took photographs. The object was probably another satellite. McDivitt and space stroller Ed White have now been up longer than all eight previous American astronauts added together. Scientists and medical experts are listening to every breath they take to every heartbeat. One of the main things they want to know is the effect of prolonged weightlessness on the human heart. McDivitt and White chatted with their wives. White told his wife he can't wait to tell her about the fabulous 20 minutes he spent maneuvering outside the Gemini 4. Mrs. McDivitt cracked, are you being good? Her orbiting husband said that about all he could do was look out the window. More news after this from Pet Milk. 
In the area news tonight, former Republican State Chairman Fred Young is reported to be favored for one of two new judgeships currently being considered for the State Court of Claims. The new positions are provided for in a bill now pending before the state legislature. Informed sources in Albany say Governor Rockefeller apparently will sign the measure, which would raise to 14 the number of positions in the court. And the informed sources say Rockefeller favors appointing Young to one of the new posts. Reportedly, the other judgeship would be filled by former Monroe County Democratic Chairman Robert O'Brien, who announced his resignation in Rochester tonight. A Republican state lawmaker has predicted that the Assembly will reverse itself next week and vote in favor of a bill that would retain adultery on the list of crimes in New York State. Assemblyman Julius Volker of Buffalo told the Associated Press he plans to recall his anti-adultery bill next week, probably by Tuesday. The Assembly defeated the measure by three votes yesterday after passing a bill to update the state's penal code. Among the accepted measures is one that would remove the criminal tag from adultery. Volker's bill would reverse that decision, continuing adultery as a crime in New York. Governor Rockefeller says he believes Congressman John Lindsay's plan to create a broad-based ticket is the right approach to winning this fall's election for mayor in New York City. The days of the Broadway ticket scalper may be near, near an end. Governor Rockefeller today signed into law a measure requiring the registration of all legitimate theater ticket employees, and the new rules also require full and accurate records of theater ticket sales. A 24-